<laughs> How long have I got? Yeah, go. Fifteen. Okay. Um, so this hopefully will be a nice, easy one because uh, what I've done is I've recorded uh, interviews uh, with about eight different students at the University of Edinburgh who have been involved in the Wikimedia residency there. Hi, my name is Ewan. I work as the Wikimedia in residence there. I've been there for two years now. So I'm not going to talk too long and let because I really want the students to take the floor because it shouldn't just be me beating the drum. We've, there's a growing network of open knowledge nodes now at the university and across Scotland. And I'm really privileged to work with Lorna and Charlie. Um, the full interviews are on that tiny URL link. They're really good. If you want to know about year two, you can find it at tinyurl.com forward slash wiki residency two and a little infographic for tinyurl.com wiki residency for the first year. Um, so the two-year reports are all written up, and this is what we were trying to do, raise awareness of Wikipedia and its sister projects, design and deliver digital skills engagement events, and just to work with colleagues all across the institution about how we can better share open knowledge and benefit from the Wikimedia projects and contribute to the Wikimedia projects. So open knowledge for the win. So uh, because time has come, the war said, to talk of many things or for the students to talk of many things. Cambridge Analytica left a bit of a sour taste in the mouth. For, uh, but we need to talk about the value we place in having somewhere online that is transparent and how conversant or how we enable our students and staff to be more conversant with the digital in intermediaries that seem to govern our daily lives. Because after all, Google and Wikipedia have this symbiotic relationship and search is the way we live now. And it, Google's dominance is undisputed, obviously. So I'll not talk anymore. I just think uh, the challenge is for universities and libraries to prepare the next generation to be informed, digital, uh, responsible online citizens. So you can swap out librarians for universities and it still works. So, I'll over to them. Oh, oh it's because I've got the bloody PowerPoint. Tech help. Panic. There we go. Uh, okay, don't Hopefully you can hear that. Yeah, I think it's a really cool project to have because it's collaborative, it's very, very real, and um, I think it also explores some really, really important parts of research, such as um, practicing, finding sources, researching a difficult topic, um, writing an article, thinking about planning and structuring, um, all that kind of thing. Like, they're skills that anyone's going to need as a medic. Um, it's, I mean, crucial, it's a vital part of being a doctor, being able to explain a patient's illness to them. So it's always useful to practice writing maybe really scientific, in-depth things in a more understandable way. Um, because, yeah, not only does it help other people to understand it, but it also makes sure that you know it too. Law forms the basis of our democracy, and I believe that it is a democratic part of our democratic rights is that we should make information um, open and knowledgeable to all people um, and I believe that editing Wikipedia comes into that mission.
There's a law and technology society um, for which I designed a law wiki project, law edited on. Um, so I identified articles that had a focus on technology law. And quite a lot of them that need to be added or edited tend to go with intellectual property law. So, um, so I created this event just so um, students can kind of get a first-hand experience of what it looks like to edit to Wikipedia, what it looks like to add um, information to Wikipedia. When you are writing in Wikipedia articles and or editing the articles, um, you're, of course, putting these legal research skills into practice. But not only that, it's that you're writing, the, you're writing articles with the law focus geared towards all kind, to people from all different kinds of backgrounds, not just lawyers um, and others with the legal mind. I approached you and, and said that I was a member of the History Society at the University of Edinburgh, that I was organizing their academic events for the upcoming academic year. Uh, and I really wanted to broaden out the type of events that we were doing um, both in terms of the type of history that we were representing, because we did quite a lot of political history events and very few uh, social history events and events related to underrepresented groups, uh, but also the type of events that we were doing, because we put on a lot of lectures and some panel discussions, but there was very few opportunities for people to directly engage in history in uh, a way that wasn't just a sort of passive listening to it. And so, Running a Wikipedia editathon seemed like a perfect way to combine these two things. It not only shows people that their degree has relevance, um, it also helps improve a resource that many people use. Uh, universities are meant to stimulate you academically. So in many cases, I will read something in a reading for a lecture. I, I will listen to my lecture speak about a specific issue that maybe is not in Wikipedia, and I will feel uh, inspired to make an article about it. Mm -hmm. uh, our lecturer mentioned uh, Shamila Bobakwa, um, a, a Algerian activist uh, for, for the independence of Algeria, and she didn't have an article in Spanish. So what I would do in that case is create the article. Being a Wikipedian for me, it's about being an advocate or an activist of knowledge. It's about being able to, what matters to you, be represented and be accessible to more people and, and produce an inspiration to more people. I want to take what we have been doing here at the university and take it back home when I return home, whether it's for the holidays or after I'm done with my studies, because you're broadening the horizons of others when they, uh, when they see these articles and the knowledge you've posted as well as you're opening doors um, for your readers, you're possibly improving representation. And I think that's uh, something we really should be working on, um, increasing representations of different languages, especially when you look at the number of, for example, Arabic speakers and speakers of the other major languages compared to the number of articles they have. It's, um, it's really surprising. It's a stark difference. I was introduced to One Lit, One Ref. Um, it's something you do to celebrate Wikipedia's birthday. The idea is that if everyone adds one reference, uh, Wikipedia will have a lot more references. Um, so I chose to add references to Scottish psychology, and it, um, it's basically a game. So you get you know, sent to this article, and you see the text, and you're like, need to find this. And um, when I found the first reference, I got very, very excited. Um, the best part was that I was also able to add more information. So not only was I able to add the reference, I was also able to expand on that point. Um, I also think it was extremely easy to do. Uh, the referencing was really interesting. I really realised how uh, good it is that Wikipedia has so many open access sources and Wikipedia is so much more than just Wikipedia in itself. There's all of the Wikimedia stuff in general. So. Um, one of the things I've found really helpful is, for example, I we study a lot of brains and brains are really confusing organs. And there's this animation on one of those pages that like shows a, a, a brain that's like rotating and it shows the brain part. And I've always wondered why none of my academics use it, because it's actually openly licensed in a way that you could use it in a lecture. And I think Wikimedia in that sense offers 
um, a lot of different media so you could easily work into teaching. Having pictures of things on Wikipedia pages and adding more than potentially just text and a few references really makes um, an article much more interesting. Um, so for example, I added a picture of um, the university library to that Wikipedia page. I also do think that where then Wikipedia has a really good space is that academia focuses way too little on how to communi communicate you know, world-leading research to the layman people, right? I'm Athena Franzana and I am a final year PhD student at the University of Edinburgh. Um, Ada Lovelace Day is a day uh, where we celebrate Ada Lovelace and it's a, it's a day that uh, we celebrate uh, all women in STEM, in science technology fields. Um, women in STEM are underrepresented and maybe the lack of role models is uh, one reason why. And maybe if we can change that, um, we can change the, the way the future generations uh, look um, at science and technology as um, a career path. I participated on all the activities and I also wrote an article uh, about Elizabeth Eleanor Field, who is one of the 19 female chemists who petitioned to be uh, fellows of the Chemistry Society. When you're a student, the biggest problem is, is actually doing practical translations. I mean, we get a bunch of different uh, things to do, you know, excerpts of, of books or, or whatever that we translate and talk about with our fellow classmates and our teachers. But it's, you know, it's just for us or it's just for our teachers that we're, we're not actually out there doing something that affects other people or other people will read. So to be given the opportunity to translate something practical that will end up being read by people and, and used by people. I think just that motivation itself was, was the biggest positive uh, of, this, of this project. Um, the, uh, yeah, I mean, thinking that, that it would have an end reader, I think was, was probably the biggest, uh, the biggest thing. And so obviously then my actual translation of it was affected because I was thinking, wow, this is going to be read by people around the world, you know, so I have to well, not only do I have to be professional about it, but I have to, you know, think of them as my target audience and not just please a teacher or whatever the case may be. So I think that was uh, one of the biggest positives for me. And yeah, just the practical translation work, you know, just getting an opportunity to translate something that I was interested in um, on, a, on a website and that, that I use regularly, I think was, uh, was a big positive, yeah. So all of those things were, were wonderful about this project. It's been a really rewarding experience and a way of engaging students in how to access and use databases, how to abstract the information from those, and how to use those to develop uh, a web-based resource. So if you're thinking about it, I would say definitely have a go. So how to summarize two, two years up in one minute. Um, basically, um, we had three assignments in year one. We doubled that in year two. We are now into year three. And uh, what else can I tell you? Um, the library and university collections now have a new digitization strategy for Edinburgh University that includes contributing to Wikipedia. and. Uh, we also have a new strategy that for, for the next four years, Wikipedia editing will be part of our Athena Swan commitment in sort of correcting underrepresentation of women in STEM fields by making more visible role models online. Um, so there, that's probably all I have time for. But there we go. Three Wikipedia classroom assignments. We're now working with digital sociology, global health. Don't cite Wikipedia, write Wikipedia. Loads of skills. And yeah, I've 
that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, I'm very happy to answer them. But I take Tim Berners-Lee's point about the whole nature of the open web, that we need to rethink our relationship with it. And if it will work, it's not working. We need to look at the systems and whether they're actually helping humanity. Are they being constructive or destructive? And I think we could probably argue for Wikipedia being constructive. Um, thank you. Um, Thanks. Just stay here to, to get across this. Um, I want really <laughs> to say something that it comes from the conversation that we had yesterday. Why still teachers at, at, at academics question the validity of Wikipedia as a source of information, but they keep promoting during Facebook groups. And <laughs> so um, we can have this conversation later. If anyone has a question, because uh, the next keynote is approaching, so we'll uh, Anyone? Anyone? I'm sorry. Oh, no, you, of course. You, you, you are an, having sorry. a person with some honor, so come. I'm, uh, great talk. Thank you. I was compelled. I was interested when you were showing one of the animated GIFs, this idea of the citation hunt. And do you, have you built tools to make it actually, like how is that working? Do you have a tool to make it easier for students to cite or explain the process? I was just interested. Um, uh, there's a developer called Guillaume Goncalves. I'm probably saying his name horribly wrong. But he, he uh, um, developed citation hunt. Um, and it's used as part of Wikipedia's annual One Lib, One Ref campaign. So every January, they run this campaign to celebrate Wikipedia's birthday, and they ask one librarian to add one reference to, Wikipedian, to Wikipedia. So, um, but I think we can all add references to Wikipedia. And it's actually quite fun if you filter it to a category on Wikipedia that you're actually interested in or knowledgeable about or care about. And it, yeah, you just click through. It'll suggest this little snippet. And it'll click through to the page. And if you're not interested, just click uh, next. And it'll suggest another little snippet. It, it's just such a low barrier way to get in besides offering articles. Um, we used it in Mexico that had people add to Spanish Wikipedia to find the gaps. And yeah, well, just to pay cre credit to Alan and uh, Brian, because we've ripped uh, and nicked their splot idea mercilessly. And we just want, we've developed this site called Wiki Games, which Anne-Marie came over and did with you guys, right? And just little short, fun tasks as a way of a way into contributing to Wikipedia, so it's not presented as an onerous thing or a, an intimidating thing that some people find. Because once they have a go, they get hooked. And it's just getting people in the room to ha give it a go and just have that conversation with them as well. And that's what I find is that eight times, eight nine times out of ten, I, we come out of convert with converts every single time. Citation uh, hunt tool. So it's all. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Thank you, all the speakers. You